Uh, my question is, how has social media been a way of connecting members of the LGBT community around the country and world? Well, I know in places where um, it is dangerous and you suffer extreme violence just for like going to see a gay movie in a public place, like places like Russia or lots of places in uh, Southeast Asia, in Africa, many, many countries. Social media is how people, that's the only way people communicate and get any information. And they actually uh, have, I've been to film festivals and they have workshops where people who are doing gay film festivals in those countries where they teach encryp encryption and techniques to spread the word and then get rid of the trace on your, your trace of anything. So I think that's really important in that way. I, I've discovered this. I've been told this. <laughs> Social media is a bit of a mystery to me. I have an intern and she's always trying to say, oh, it's so easy, you just do this, this, this. And I'm like, okay, I lost you at the first this. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's a young people's thing, at least for me. I'm more interested in really long format, thinking deeply, making a story that develops over time that someone wants to lose themselves in. So social media is just weird to me. Have you seen the film Love, Simon? No, I have not yet. Love, Simon is a film that came out last year um, about a young man in high school and his experiences uh, as part of his coming out. It's is coming out um, adventure, I guess, and the role that uh, social media played in it. Not altogether good, but yeah, not altogether bad either. So, that, I, I don't know, that, I thought that was an interesting study. Uh, I mean, the, the point of it is not uh, a study of social media, but social media plays a, plays a significant role in that film. And I gotta say, I, I, in my class of 25 students, I just had them write uh, film papers, and five of them wrote about Love, Simon, so they liked Love, Simon. <laughs> so it's worth watching. I, I certainly have different views about social media. Uh, for my work, uh, which is um, advocacy in service uh, provider, uh, social media really was one of the best things that could have happened to me. I remember I was really hesitant to, to be part of social media, and, and people were like, why don't you have Facebook? And I was like, no, I don't want to. You know, I kind of was like, you're a little bit old school. I, I want to communicate with people. I want to look at them. I, I, I wanted to see them smile, and but then someone really pushed me. They're like, "Well, you know, you're running a nonprofit, and and you should connect with the work and the people." And within like a matter of a couple of years, I had over forty thousand followers. Um, I do recognize that social media, particularly you are, if you are in the public eye, it's about responsibility. It's about making sure that. Um, not only you are honest about what is going on, but you are also sensitive. And then you really think about what is happening. So I learned to manage the messaging um, very carefully. Uh, and that's the good benefit. I, I, I think it's important to communicate with audiences. It's important to communicate with people, providing that you take that responsibility that everything that really comes out uh, needs not to hurt people. On the other end, I have also, uh, as, uh, as a transgender uh, activist, that has gotten a lot of coverage, particularly with social media, um, is the haters. Mm. <laughs> the haters. It's like I get a lot of death threats. I, oh my God, it's, it's, I try not to let it get to me, but sometimes, you know, you get caught up in like having, um, 400 likes on a post that you did about social justice and how you were able to discuss um, LGBTQ homelessness. And then all of a sudden you get three haters. Um, first, I remember the first time I was on the Washington Post. Well, not the first time, it was many, many years ago for AIDS walk. But when the Washington Post featured me uh, on a big story, uh, most of the social media was very positive, but I think it was hard to navigate the very negative. 
And part of what I do know about social media is that I really have to think about my safety because unfortunately, you know, I do get hate. Uh, just about a month ago, I got a letter at Casa Ruby with no name and it was coming from California. So I didn't even open it because I was like, is this anthrax? <laughs> is this? So I, I think a lot of it has to do with the twisted things. I, for the most part, I want to believe that I'm doing good work, that I am really addressing issues that are important to people, like you know, survival, uh, trying to be able to support people. But even within that context of who I am, uh, not everybody really agrees with them. That it's gone through a lot of evolution in terms of how to deal with LGBTQ people. Uh, Facebook, when I was in San Francisco, went through a big fight with the LGBT community in San Francisco because Facebook requires you to use your real name. Mm -hmm. And so there were trans people and drag queens and kinky people who screamed because, you know, if you're trans and your birth certificate has the name you were born under but you've since changed your name, that's a gigantic problem. And it took a long time for Facebook to kind of come around and, and understand that. They still haven't quite hit that nail on the head, but that was a gigantic fight. Another thing that, I've, that I'm concerned about is, that, is the impact of Instagram, especially on young gay men. Because Instagram is designed to be a profile of your best life through whatever filters are necessary. And I worry about what it means for young gay men to see Instagram profiles of other gay men who are living this fabulous life, whether they're on the Atlantic, 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 Atlantis cruise, or whether they're taking pictures from Ibiza, and they're just, they're tan and they're thin, and they've got their abs, and they've got their arms around 20 friends that they made on the cruise, and you as a gay man living in, you know, the Midwest who's just come out and you're trying to find your way, you look at that and think, but I play football and drive an F-150. Is that supposed to be me? Am I allowed to be me or do I have to be that? Yeah.